Today, we have a next session in our HR focused webinars, and then we are going to speak how to automate people operation. And we are going to start from the very beginning as all that we've seen, um, automated contracting in HR. It's a very new topic. And uh, all our customers and all the new leads we are obtaining, that's the first thing they do after uh, implementing HR system. So how you can go further, where to start. And I have an excellent uh, technologies, lawyers, joining uh, practitioners, joining our webinar today. Uh, welcome, Sam Moore. Uh, Sam is from uh, Nakino, and he has a lot of experience in uh, legal technology. He is uh, working in uh, Furnace Powell and uh, in Rain and Court. Uh, we have uh, Thea uh, joining us from Law Firm Yarn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then uh, Thea is from York, and uh, Thea has a lot of experience. Oh, sorry. A uh, lot of experience uh, in uh, process automation. She is a certified information privacy processor and uh, and also guest lecturer at Tallinn University of Technology and CEO of Caltech Legal Lab. And I have Marianne with me, and uh, she is our customer success lead, and she has been joining Avocado from Legal World again and helping now all our HR teams on board and uh, implement um, contract automation, contract lifecycle management tools into their daily lives and processes. And then, of course, me, uh, founder and CEO of Avocado. Uh, also, uh, coming out of the legal world, I've uh, been working in a law firm for more than 10 years and uh, really uh, into uh, the automation and the process, uh, uh, to how to change like lives of the people who are working with their contracts and documents. That has been my main topic. So uh, what to expect uh, from uh, today's uh, webinar? Uh, so we are going to speak uh, as I said from at the beginning, we are going to speak about mostly how to start and what to expect. So we are going to go through this PPP, PPP for breakfast. It means like everything starts with people, process, and then to platform technology. Uh, we are going to talk about pain and then pain from the perspective, I mean, where is the biggest pain, who has that pain, and how to resolve it or how to start resolving it what kind of teams uh, the pain lies into. Uh, then we are going to take uh, the topic about how to set the goals. I mean, I would say it's, uh, it's a cool <laughs> uh, heading to the topic. If you don't know where you're going, no road will get there. So again, the planning, goal setting, and then having also really mindful expectations on the process. So you know what to expect and where to go and when things are going to happen and by who. And then we are going to speak about functionality. I mean, there's like a lot going on in the CLM space. But when we are looking at the HR perspective, what's the difference? Is there any difference? What to look into? And when you're obtaining or um, purchasing CLM to your company, would this cover your HR function too? And why this is it important? Because we have seen a lot uh, CLM, which is for legal teams, sometimes do not fit to HR teams. Why? We're going to talk about that. And then uh, interesting topic about legal experience. I mean, what this legal experience means, biases. I mean, what are the most typical biases? Why we see as well when we are meeting our potential clients, they start to work and then afterwards, they give us the feedback, what happened really, whether like correct, how they change them. And then we are going to give a real life view. And uh, then, uh, yeah, our all participants have their own real life view. I mean, when they and how they experience implementing, using, onboarding, uh, HR function, people operations, and what are the experiences. And very important point as well, 
please add your questions into uh, this um, chat uh, chat tab under. Find that one. Feel free anytime uh, to add your comments and questions, and then we will take them one by one after the section or in the end. So. Okay, then um, Sam, Tia, Marianne, uh, we expect like really live conversation here. And uh, we are starting with the PPP. Uh, yeah, that's uh, like for breakfast. That's where everything starts. And we will start about, uh, like I mentioned as well, people, process, platform. Maybe Sam, uh, you at the legal technology, very experienced in every side of uh, automation, vendor side, your side, advisory side. Maybe you will be the one open the topic and let's get it going. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you, Mariana. So I think starting with people for me is the absolutely right thing to do on any transformation project at all. And when I've done projects similar to what we're talking about today, the people stage normally begins with who the stakeholders are and thinking carefully about all the different people in the business who are affected in some way by the process you're trying to change. And I often found in my experience, more people than you might initially think are, are involved. And I think in a use case like, like human resources in, H, in HR, it's very easy to forget just how many people in a business require that process to be efficient and effective, and it, it adds a lot to it. So I think the, the people stage of this, this process, mm -hmm. not to confuse the two processes, the people stage is absolutely the right place to be. And I think any project in automation should begin with sketching out every single stakeholder this project could touch and what their perspective and what their their stakes would be. Yeah, uh, absolutely right. And uh, why this topic is uh, is interesting about the people, because when we're talking about the CLM adoption, then the like first people who will touch the product and who will start implementing uh, the technology or outlining the process, these are lawyers. But with the HR process, I think 90% actually are HR managers, people operations leads. And we don't see in that process that many lawyers actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really depends again when the implementation uh like some you also had an experience like when the implementation project starts from the law firm or alternative legal service provider of course then lawyers are leading the project with the evaluation um and implementation etc but when it starts in-house pretty often we see only hr function working uh towards the the goal and that and implementing the product isn't it that's definitely what I've seen, yes. And I think the reason for that is the HR personnel have a very different set of criteria that they are thinking about. The lawyers still typically have a, an efficiency mindset. They want to save time. They want to get through more files in a shorter amount of time. HR tends to be, in my experience, more outcome focused. You know, they want to, they want to keep the business running smoothly. They want to satisfy their relevant KPIs that they might have. They are generally... Um, more concerned about getting the right outcome as smoothly as possible rather than billing time or, or meeting budgets so that you might have with a, from, a, from a lawyer. So I think that's right. They have a very different perspective. And I think in some use cases like automation, that's a very positive thing because it, in my experience, it makes them a little more open to trying something different if they can see a clear path to a better process. Absolutely. And uh, when we're talking about the process, I mean, uh, it's very important as well, um, uh, as we discussed before, before the seminar as well and today's webinar, I mean, there's a really different end uh, where you want to start and actually where you want to go. Because, I mean, when you're automating a onboarding process, then we haven't seen a team who doesn't want to go forward. And that's also the process you have to keep in mind. You don't resolve only that initial, like the biggest pain, but you have to see the road ahead where the team is heading, right? 
from maybe uh, customer success side, it's always uh, important to have the project leader, the main person. It really doesn't matter if it is legal or HR, but maybe as a good intro to the second point, which is the process, that person must have a very clear view on what it is that the company wants to achieve. And they must have an understanding of how that process currently looks like, what it uh, could look like, and what it will look like. So it's a very tight uh, collaboration between, let's say, any advisor or any uh, platform uh, and that company who will be then automating their processes. So I would also stress about the people aspect, the importance of uh, the project leader in the whole uh, process. Um, as I myself have experience in uh, uh, implementing new technological solutions and automating processes in a law firm. Um, I think it's with any automation project, it's very important that the, the project leader is um, enthusiastic about the new IT solutions. And this is actually, it can be quite difficult to, to find in the organization. I have discovered that there's a quite a huge gap actually, at least when talking about law firms, um, in the knowledge about the uh, different IT solutions available on the market, which you can use in your organization to, to carry out the automation, especially with the rise of no-code, low-code, there are excellent tools available. But the project leader should be uh, one person who is enthusiastic about these solutions and who wants to learn about them and uh, um, get to know them better on the way and try and implement them. So choosing the right project leader is actually pretty crucial as well. Definitely. Absolutely. Excellent point. Yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, quickly, let's go to the platform as well. We're not going to stop here for long as we are going to discuss it later as well around um, uh, uh, under the functionality part. But, uh, but it's also, I mean, maybe just to make a point that that's a final thing <laughs> and it doesn't work itself. And then we go back to the people again, who are implementing, who is in your team. And, and the platform is always comes to the team. It doesn't come along uh, alone, like, okay, here is your tool, let's get started. Yes, no good, no good things, you can figure it out. But as with the CLM, it doesn't onboard itself. We have seen it, it just doesn't. It's uh, It might be a very, uh, no code visual automation tool that uh, you can really do it yourself, but it still takes time to figure it out and put it into the work, especially when there are more complex workflows to build and more complex documents to build. Okay, let's jump to the uh, next topic and um, and let's talk about pain and uh, and work to start to automate. Uh, so basically. We covered a bit who has a pain. Uh, basically, yes, it's the HR team mostly. And um, and um, and then what kind of pain they have and where it lies. And then we can yeah discuss with Marianne as well. I mean, when you are getting the new uh, customers on board, uh, where and what they start with. And um, and uh, but then we can take a uh, next slide as well and and discuss it a bit because there are really different life cycles, like employee life cycle. We can automate and uh, and what we have seen, I mean, where the journey starts. And actually, it's surprising to us that we often the journey can start not from the um, new uh, employee uh, well, recruitment process, but it could start also like like. As a huge project on mass amendments, <laughs> and that's such a big pain that now we cannot do it anymore, and we have to adopt the technology uh, to help us. That's definitely true. So I guess the process indeed actually starts with uh, managing the um, to understanding who is the team, and then mapping out uh, what is the pain point exactly. Like Mariana said, sometimes. It can be the uh, amendments, sometimes it can be the employment processing uh, for the new employees. It can be loads of different things, but mapping is definitely one of the first steps to understand what is the pain, how we can solve this. Um, and um, then we continue on with uh, specifically um, 
opening up the tasks uh, step by step, then um, moving towards automation. Um, indeed, quite often uh, there are certain times in a year where those amendments uh, have to be done, and uh, hence it can sometimes there can be such a um, time pushing uh, the whole process because these things have to be done in a certain time frame, and um, and there actually automation can simplify the process uh, significantly. Yeah. yeah. Something. Um, yeah, sorry, Sam. Yeah. So I wanted to add to that. At this stage of the process, I've always found that being able to measure the opportunity is always very helpful. So, for example, talking about automating an HR process, if you're able to provide an estimate of how many hours a week or a month a certain person spends correcting a mistake they regularly see, for example, and then scaling that by their cost to the business per hour, you should be able to put a number on what this challenge or what this pain is actually costing the business. And I've always found that very interesting because when you do this exercise, I've often found the number is much bigger than you might've thought. And a, a pain point that may have been seen as annoying or frustrating may actually be quite expensive. And the opportunity, the, the, the potential to correct it, to put things in place that improve the process becomes much more attractive when you can put a number next to it that it will save the business X amount of money per year. So basically, yeah, looking, I mean, because, I mean, historically, um, always legal has been seen as a cost center. I mean, we really, as lawyers, don't like it, but it has associated also the business model law firms have and, and, uh, and almost looking like, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't create any business, but it does. And I mean, we really have to look into that topic differently now. And, uh, Additionally to that, uh, uh, the value you're creating through efficiency, uh, implementing those products and uh, freeing your team time to do the value work, then definitely there's one other thing what we have discovered and uh, focusing more and more around this, like the pain, yeah, it is time and resources, what the team has and where you put it, definitely, but also the trust. I mean, how the company works with the contracts and how the other people are perceiving that. I mean, outside of the company, your employees, your future employees, your partners. And that's the topic we're going to touch later as well, why it is important. And, and it's a, like additional value you, I mean, you cannot measure in money, right? So I guess the summary here is that uh, actually with the process of automation, there is a huge uh, amount of different problems that you can actually uh, reduce, exactly like the mistakes that uh, actually can pop in, then you have to change those documents. It, it can be a much more complex uh, scale of problems uh, that automation that actually addresses than just those amendments that can be made much faster. Absolutely. And like, I mean, yeah, we didn't touch like Losing the, the deadlines, uh, losing opportunities, um, making a mistake pretty often we see like, I mean, we touch it again later a bit. I mean, where is the single source of truth of your data, of your contract, where it lies? But uh, yeah, let's take under that and discuss a bit as well. Um, employee lifecycle automation, uh, where to start? We spoke about it uh, uh, already uh, in, the, in the last slide, but Yes, it is. It is pretty interesting for us. And um, I don't know uh, what is uh, your experience, but um, um, let's say um, 70 or 80 percent of HR uh, automation starts with recruitment. And especially and when we start we speak about recruitment, then definitely there is a certain size of the company uh, where they have to be uh, that this becomes a pain. And uh, we, have, we haven't seen basically the team uh, under 50 employees where they start with the recruitment or there should be some like uh, critical mass. Critical, yeah, critical <laughs> mass or turnover employees or seasoning or whatever happening that you really need to hire first uh, and uh, get lots of people fast on board. And it could start earlier if you have a roadmap ahead, like, I mean, I need to do it maybe hire 30 people now and then it comes more 
branches I have to do, and then you already see like it's not manually visible. And then uh, like a really cross-centric or cross companies, they start earlier. But in general, yeah, the pain starts to kick in when there's a lot of employee turnover and then it's a certain number of employees already on board. But uh, the second uh, big uh, topic under that is performance management and uh, especially amendment management. And that could be a huge, especially to the companies which have a need to amend the employment contracts uh, biannually or annually. And then it could be a massive pain uh, to do it manually. And it could, uh, it could really, um, uh, it's frustrating that there could be a lot of mistakes in it as well. Because, it, I mean, we have counted uh, different uh, manual uh, touch points or manual workflows you really have to go through to get it done at, at least 15 <laughs> upload and download point and which is uh, if you calculate it with a with a like 100 300 1000 employees then it gets like huge and then we come back to the same comment that it's really huge and it's not just a uh, it's not just uh, like you think it's smaller, but it's actually bigger, as, as you like commented. Like Sam said, indeed, uh, if you start measuring it, you can often be surprised at, at the results. I think uh, I would say that um, performance management can be really a good place to start automation for many companies, actually, because uh, especially for smaller and mid-sized companies, they maybe don't recruit uh, very many employees each month and so on. But performance management is of great importance to many companies who um, want to monitor the per performance of their employees and uh, give out promotions and so on. So you can just start by automating very simple things. For example, um, automatic notifications about uh, doing a, an interim uh, performance management uh, interview or something, um, just like automating the very simple things which are actually of great importance in the whole process. So it can be a great place to start for several companies. I think yeah, that's like yeah, right. And uh, one big thing is that also this uh, option agreements and uh, employee option uh, option plans. When once they start to implement, and I mean, right now we have put it into a recruitment, but it could happen any time, and it actually goes also under like performance similarly. Yeah, I was thinking about that same thing while we were talking about this slide that performance management, I think is sometimes almost an afterthought when you're designing these systems because recruitment feels rightly or wrongly to be the really exciting bit where lots of new stuff is happening, lots of attention is paid. But a really well run performance process is just good for the business and it makes employees feel welcome. It makes them feel appreciated. Um, what you don't want to do is just send a Word document and say, fill this Word document in, email it back to me. And then several weeks later, you might have a half hour conversation about it. It, it doesn't feel good as an employee, as a team member, if that's how that process runs. Whereas a really well-designed and sort of well-automated process to get your information and get your feedback as an employee, it makes a huge difference to that perception of yourself as part of the team. But I think it's often overlooked. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it might surprise, and we have seen it as well, you may start one day and once you start automating your document flows and your workflows and you're collaborating from the start with your employees and potential employees, that's again bounce back that trust um, question and what you pointed out very well as well, like how you feel in the middle of the process as a, as a person, how much you understand it, how much you can control it, how visible everything the process is for you. And, and you don't sit into the black box and you don't understand the legalese, you don't understand what happens next. And you're really inside the process, not outsider. And also uh, like automating even some very simple things with a user-friendly uh, program can actually create like uh, almost maybe immediate value for the company. For example, let's say that you 
agree with your uh, manager that you will uh, make like, I don't know, 10 sales calls per week. And then uh, you automate uh, a part of this process so that the employee will get automatic notifications about you have to make a sales call. And then um, let's imagine that it's like a no-code, low-code platform. You can build a place for uh, making notes about each sales call. So by doing this, it actually helps the employee to do the sales calls, which can lead to clients. So it can actually bring uh, almost like immediate value for the company. Absolutely. And uh, let's uh, maybe dig a little bit into uh, this. Um, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'd already changed the slide. So let's dig into the recruitment as well, because I mean, uh, we have a lot of documents that are named and templates. Uh, I mean, what it means actually to create the template, what it really means and what's wrong with Word, why Word template doesn't work anymore in today's world, why they are not good enough. I mean, let's let's talk about this a little bit as well, because I mean, it's a huge thing, like when you already have a word template and it's, you think it's a great template and it's put into the SharePoint or some other file um, uh, server, you can keep uh, all your templates. What's happening actually today? Why it doesn't, why it's not good enough? I think uh, here we are touching upon the one point we mentioned earlier as well, one source of truth yeah so if there if you have a word file that circulates around companies and maybe this somewhere in a drive it still it can be copied someone changes changes something here you might not notice the change so this kind of word template can get out of your control and hence control and single source of truth run this um well is is the issue here uh, that is lacking that is yeah, definitely. I mean, we can, um, Sam and Tia, you can comment that as well, but there are like a different points why word is, it doesn't work for HR. I mean, basically, it's data, yeah, data connectivity. You cannot connect data points with any other system, right? Then you can coll collaborate. I mean, you can use Google Docs, but what the feedback is, you got a lot of errors there. And again, you don't control any of the content. If you collaborate, it's all open. I mean, open to everyone to change whatever uh, they want to change. And, and only the things that should be changed, not everything. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, data, the content, and then uh, negotiation. When you really need to negotiate something, then it happens like the different versions of the documents get into the different mailboxes and, uh, and the versioning gets really out of the control. And then again, the signing process, we have seen like lot and approval process, how to manage that one on top of that when you really want to get people on board. And pretty often this is a really time critical because also in our customers, we see like they need to be at their new position at certain time and the managers, signers, um, they also lose a track, I mean, what needs to be signed, and you have to chase them several times. Yeah, I think yeah, all, all that absolutely. And I've also seen a lot of concern around double handling of data in HR teams sometimes, especially if you've got a very high volume department, a lot of people being brought on board in a short time. The potential for making a mistake when you're transcribing someone's details, for example, the employee gives you their bank account details so they can be paid. I've spoken to HR professionals who get, break out in a cold sweat about well, what if I get that wrong, someone, some random person gets paid and not, not the new employee. And I don't know how often that actually happens, but I know it's a concern and it goes to double handling of data. The, the ideal scenario is that the new employee is coming on board, they provide data <laughs> which is automatically moved where it needs to go. And another human being in the HR team doesn't have to touch it at all. That's far better, especially if you're under um, an, some kind of time constraint or, or general pressure to get things right first time, then using a template won't necessarily be the right way to go. 
Absolutely. And uh, the template, actually, when we're talking about template, and then we can go to the next topic as well and uh, and uh, start talking about the process. I mean, when we start evaluating us, I mean, I, we feel a pain. There's a lot of documents done, a lot of mistakes made. Google Drive doesn't work. Word doesn't provide uh, enough efficiency what we need to the workflows for turnaround times, etc. So how we go to how the company should evaluate uh, their own maturity stage where they are and what are the progress steps. So we are going to open these two topics as well. And uh, why it matters, as we said, it's expectation management and also, I mean, the knowledge about where to start and how to, I mean, how to be ready to implement something, right? So we will take the first uh, part and we will start uh, speaking about the maturity stages. I um, mean, again, from the same angle, people process tools and, uh, and the standardization level as uh, one more aspect here. And the uh, wide repeatable green here. So it's again, from our research and experience, that's the stage most of the uh, HR teams are working uh, and, and looking for the new solution. So there's uh, like one more slide here, but uh, we are not going to uh, going to go deeper into that uh, like a final stages. Well, I'm going back. Yeah, final stages, uh, but mostly distributable and what it means. It means uh, that I go back that the organization has a basic contract process in place. Uh, it's not really well defined. It doesn't have to be. That's the process you start building with uh, with with your with your team and the team. We will talk later who is in your team, and uh, and um, it's not consistently followed always. But it means like uh, really uh, the basic is there. So I. I it's not like we, we cannot start with a real initial process. We have to get the repeatable and then we will get into, into the scalable, um, uh, pick the, the technology to help us to scale that process. And then the people, uh, yes, uh, then uh, involvement of contracting pros, professionals and who's the contracting pros, professional, it's very often in HR, the HR manager. Who are doing that job and we have seen as well pretty often after implementing the process it will change so before uh, very often uh, business people or the other function function leads were working with the contract but then it will go fully to the hr team handed over to the hr team to own the process and uh, then the process yeah like i said basic processing has to be in place and uh, basic tools or systems uh, for managing contracts also in place. So the team actually knows what to do, but the system is not enough to scale. And, uh, and there are some standardized templates in place, but if you start using the technology, then also the template buying process gets much, much faster because depending on the product you use or choose, then you can reuse the clauses, all your knowledge base clause library getting like bigger and bigger, and you can basically templatify every simple process and, and it scales. You don't have to do it manually anymore, even the letters, whatever. Everything you repeat, uh, you can create the template. And template doesn't mean, I mean, when we think about template, it's pretty often we think about documents. The template actually in the technology, it also means like template for the document workflow, template for the different people workflows are coming in, template for naming the document, uh, archiving those documents, uh, collaborating, putting it to the right places, uh, sharing it. I mean, you can templify process and content and the flow, how things are happening. So definitely also from, again, customer success perspective, as Mariana said, it is extremely important that the company uh, who we're going, whose processes we're going to automate know where they want to go, that they have some sort of um, sufficient level of processes in place that can be automated because if it is a mess, it is uh, automate, automation doesn't really help. I mean, this will not solve the problem. It, 
everyone like uh, everyone who wants to automate something must have clear goals and uh, and then they can have a clear road and good good road ahead of them Sam, yeah would you like to comment something here give your perspective yes uh, maybe just to emphasize uh, the um about automation that it should uh, follow after optimization which was just emphasized this is something which uh i think many companies don't understand how important it is automation like sounds attractive and uh, there's a lot of hype also around it and i have seen uh, also in our in our own uh, firm somewhat that um people tend to like want to jump into automation right away but uh, the first step should be um, going through and analyzing the processes and thinking about uh, what sh what can be optimized and then uh, automating it as the last step because otherwise you automate the wrong things and it doesn't help but this is uh, very often overlooked i think yeah i i agree completely with taya on, on this point you need to have some idea as to what you're trying to achieve before you start. Mm -hmm. And let's say, for example, you know the average recruitment time that your HR team does from offer to onboarding is, let's say, 10 days. If you have a goal where you want that to be eight days, then you know what you're trying to achieve. That's a fantastic goal to keep in mind. If you have no goal, if you have no vision of what an improved process should deliver, it's very easy to get lost in all the exciting possibilities of automation without realizing which changes are actually moving you closer towards what that goal is. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we will uh, try to speed up here because yeah, time is going fast as well. <laughs> and uh, take the next slide and uh, go through the progress. I mean, why the progress matters as well. I mean. When you want to have the new technology uh, helping you to scale the process and uh, really achieve your goals for the team, then I mean, where to start uh, and uh, what it means and um, like getting aware, like yes, we have a problem and now we, I mean, mapping where the problem lies, what we want to solve, what is the goal, and it really you cannot jump from like over one. Um, progress step to another you really have to go through them and uh, then um, it it means like really evaluating uh, also uh, your need your workflows and uh, I mean what what you actually need and that's why we also uh, go to the next uh, step now and we are going to discuss what you actually need and uh, that's a very important topic because I mean there are a lot of cool stuff out there, but do you need it? And maybe you miss important aspects of your needs and functionality, and you just don't come up on those things. And then with the HR function again, it is it is some a little bit more specific, and uh, and why it is, uh, then we just dig into that. So and and again from our own experience and uh, and uh, our customer experience and what they're looking for and then we have compiled a list here and we can just discuss point point by point and then uh, go uh, further here. So customization. So it is for employee why it matters. It is matters because most of the employees they want to use the system which is translated into the language. And when we're speaking in European countries, we see it a lot. I mean, yes, the system is in English, but we have employees, I mean, who are not like, I mean, um, like really, like, I mean, fluent in that language. Yeah, fluent in language. And they, again, the trust question, do they trust the system? If they don't understand the system, they don't trust. And that's the company, uh, company uh, obligation to provide the system or implement the system they can trust and that's why this language matters in HR automation and HR contract automation so they could push the buttons in their own language and understand even if the document is in the local language that it's also uh, the system is in their local language and it really matters and uh, second thing there uh, about how the system again looks like 
I mean, are you sending the documents from your branded workspace? Does it look like your company document management system or document workflow system or how it looks like? And with the bigger companies and, and with HR, that's the case that most of the, the companies which come to the document automation, contract automation, then these are already like medium size uh, to enterprise level. And then it again matters, is it possible to have a white label contract portal? how it looks like, how much it can customize for our own need uh, plus integration? I mean, how much we can integrate into the existing tech stack? The last one is integrations. And uh, this is also very relevant, for example, with the point that also Sam brought up that uh, for example, um, the bank uh, account details can go wrong if the systems are not automated enough that through integration uh, from the contracting portal to the HR uh, system, the information moves automatically. So there are several uh, integrations, like endless amount of integrations possible, and you, it definitely helps a lot if this integration is in place for the tools that you are using. Absolutely. Uh, anyone wants to comment that point, or we will move forward? Um, I think just very briefly, the integrations point, I don't want to labor the point too much, but yeah, that's a piece that I think has become far more important in the last few years. Maybe as little as five years ago, very limited options in the market for that integration piece with HR systems, but thankfully it's a lot better now. Yeah, I, I agree. I would also I have also uh, seen that just during the last two years, this has become very important. If you look at, for example, some platforms such as, I don't know, Notion and Bubble as well, then uh, if you search about their integration possibilities, uh, there are like uh, tens of them now and they are opening up new ones because they see that this is important for the clients. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we see as well why it is happening because the document of legal document is, doesn't stand alone anymore. I mean, there's a terms that you can automate so many what, hap what happens after signing. I mean, it is a lot going on. I mean, how to get the document signed, but the life starts after that. And uh, and that's why it's important how these or like different systems communicate with each other, supporting the function. Uh, then the next point, standardization and automation level. So what you would like to, is it enough to have just like a simple data feed? So or you want to have a like a really complex document flows from the uh, like employee data sheet to the employment contract to NDA, et cetera. So you can really build complex document workflows uh, in addition to uh, a um, people workflows, I mean, who does what uh, with the document. So it's a very good point again, when you think about your process you want to automate or what you want to automate later, then it's very good uh, to check it out. I mean, what's possible? What's really possible? How complex or high dynamic workflows is possible to build with a system? Uh, then uh, we touched it as well, like collaboration, a lot of system are locked uh, to internal collaboration only. And then it comes also the pricing. Uh, if you want to collaborate also outside parties, you have a lot of employees check the pricing because it really depends who is the user and how the pricing works. And, uh, and uh, is it even possible uh, to uh, share and collaborate outside the company? And I, I today, when we have seen, I mean, how the system evolve and uh, what direction they're going, I mean, I, I don't see the point not to have an opportunity to collaborate outside stakeholders and uh, not just creating internal documents. And then uh, again, integration check what kind of um, ready made or, or like no good basically integration in the system. And, uh, and if you have to integrate yourself or it is already available on the platform. Uh, it makes life so much easier when you check it out, when you're acquiring a new, new system for, for HR. 
and e-signing let's talk about that one a little bit longer so e-signing becomes also very, very relevant for hr because in many like in you eu countries you really have like different rules you cannot sign with toko sign employment contract for instance or sign now or just electronic signature you need qualified electronic signature maybe there you uh, can take that one and comment a little bit further and give more insight about that topic Yes, um, this is an important topic because uh, um, eventually if you um, draft documents and you uh, want to get them signed, then the most important thing actually uh, um, is that the documents, the contracts, for example, employment contract or I don't know, traineeship contract, uh, uh, whichever, that it will be uh, legally binding at the end of the day, because uh, this is the main thing why HR is, is doing the things that they, they are doing. And um, you need to have a look into uh, both EU rules, but also, also into the rules in your own uh, country, because um, the legal requirements about, uh, first of all, the format of a valid contract, and then uh, second of all, uh, what constitutes as a valid uh, e-signature, they can actually be very different. And you might also um, have uh, a need to look into some guidelines by your supervisory authorities about uh, which programs can you use to carry out uh, the e-signing. And then again, this uh, integration topic uh, comes into play here as well, because it can be very helpful if uh, the, the program for doing the e-signing can be integrated into the platform where you are um, doing uh, the document, creating the contract. Yes, it, it could be a right, like really pity when once you discover like, I mean, once everything is set up and, uh, and you're happy about the system that um, you really have to start downloading them and sending them to exactly. sign that system and it has happened a lot. So uh, think about it, ask about it, and be aware that uh, uh, the signing, I think it's absolutely must, I mean, to have it also on the platform and support, and it supports uh, really your country, I mean, where your employees are, or where you're hiring uh, those signatures, and you can really configure it accordingly. And then it is um, life cycle management. I mean, it's where we uh, store that, employment contract. Like Mariana said that after uh, creating or signing the document, the whole life actually begins. So the life cycle of each document is actually much longer and it has many steps uh, like those amendments, uh, notifications, and uh, the data is probably used and changed at different points of time if it is, it is needed. So um, life cycle is definitely an important uh, part of any system that you would use um, if you want to automate something. Yeah, and it's uh, connected with a single source of truth. So basically, if all the documents kept into one system and same data is used, uh, then it's easy that those documents are linked also in your storage and, uh, and even after the termination, because with employment, you need to have a data retention policy as well and keep those documents pretty long time. So that's also something to be aware of and uh, think about, I mean, what's, what's uh, uh, the solution for your company for that? And then if you have some other system, again, can you integrate? Can we send all the signed documents to some other system? Is it possible? So like the old workflow is working. And the team, I, uh, why it's like a plus the team, it really means like ask about team. Um, I mean, who's helping you to automate? Who is um, helping your team to map the process, push the team to get to the goals? And, uh, and uh, like we said before as well, it's not only the platform, it's really about the team. And, uh, and uh, this team who's helping you with the contract automation, either it is external, uh, legal team or it's an in-house legal team or it's a, uh, your um, technology partner, legal engineer, like set the up, divide the uh, obligations, keep the, everyone accountable and then the project will really get nicely off. 
So uh, yeah, and uh, let's jump to the last topic here. Like, I mean, which wraps up basically everything what we have discussed before legal experience. I mean, why it is important, why it's important as well in the HR function. So basically in the digital world, it everything you do now in the digital world, it's your footprint, it's your branding on top of that how you look like to your employees and uh, and how the company you may say it's uh, really important we are innovative but when you really send with an email all uh, like employment contract with a you have to fill in data many places you spend your time your team time it doesn't look like that mm -hmm. I think something's really important and I think the HR professionals in the audience will know this but often their colleagues won't is that HR is the first department and the last department that every employee deals with. And I think it's a human psychology thing that we remember the first thing people said, the last thing people said, the experience that stakeholders, including employees, have dealing with HR will stay with them. It's a very, very important part of the process. And if you make a very positive first impression, for example, on a new employee, they come into your organization with a certain perception of how the organizations run and how they're going to fit in here. If the first thing they get is a giant pile of hard copy documents to the letterbox, they've got to sign and send back, they'll have a very negative perception coming in. This organization is behind the times, they're clunky, they're inefficient. It just sets a tone for your relationship with the business, which can be very easily changed to a very positive, very progressive, very maybe even exciting tone. And I feel that opportunity is, is right there for the taking. And hopefully more businesses are recognizing just how important that is. I completely agree. And I would maybe add that it can also set the tone about uh, like about your impression as a company for your clients even. Because if you, for example, if you talk about uh, innovation and new technologies to your clients as a business, but you don't really implement them and you are not enthusiastic about them then you know they understand that it's not it can't be very genuine and it can also impact like your impression as a uh, potential service provider and maybe about this uh, typical bias i would really stress based on my my own uh, experience in automating and implementing new programs that a huge bias which uh, companies and uh, people working in them usually have is that every new program is extremely difficult and burdensome for me to uh, uh, start using. Uh, like people have this uh, thought in their head, even if the, the program or the technology really is very user friendly, looks nice, uh, flows nicely, there, there is this kind of bias usually uh, with at least like, I don't know, 60-70% of employees uh, that it's difficult and um, it, it takes time for me to uh, start using it. So I would rather not start. I would just uh, kind of procrastinate with it. Absolutely. So basically the, the biggest, uh, biggest uh, progress as to praise the comfort zone. I mean, even if the comfort mm -hmm. zone is really uncomfortable and, um, and um, nothing else. So people always in the mind look for the reason not to start. I mean, to find yes. a really good reason. And the other one, uh, which has been also like eye-opening for us when we are talking about HR function, then it's uh, like people feel that if we are adopting the new technology and um, and we have having a lot of like employees or potential employees from different uh, uh, different age groups, and that it could be uh, that maybe they are not so uh, like technology or techies and maybe they don't get it done and uh, uh, is it really possible like I'm sharing like a data sheet with a with a let's say 70 60 year old person and uh, we don't like we, we are afraid that they will not get it done and they might feel like opposite like I mean the trust they might lose the trust and they might lose their employee but actually, it, uh, real life has shown like it's absolutely opposite and there shouldn't be any really like to follow that bias that I mean, 
only young people can get the get the job done in in a digital world. It's absolutely not like that. Sometimes when having calls with the, our clients, I've been even surprised. Uh, if there are, let's say, elderly people using avocado, for example, because they can do it and they don't have really any big issues. So indeed, um, it can be any person of any age uh, and it just needs, let's say, an open mindset to um, those new equipments and tools that um, both the company and all the employees can and will be using. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, I have to apologize myself. I unfortunately have to uh, leave, as I told the hosts uh, yesterday. Um, I have really, really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you so much for uh, having me. And um, yeah, I'm hoping, uh, I'm looking forward to our uh, new, new initiatives uh, together. Yes, thank you, Thea. Thank you. And actually, yeah, uh, we are about to wrap up. Uh, we was about to show us a short demo. I mean, how it looks like, how it works, but we are going to share it later with our uh, with our people who uh, registered with us and uh, who joined the webinar. So we'll get the, the demo video later. We are not going to show it real life because we're really getting like two minutes left. And uh, we are going to wrap up here and, um, and uh, hope to um, put together the next webinar where we can really dig more deeper into some like a smaller or like more uh, focused topic here. I uh, hope like uh, this discussion opened up at least or like provoked that thoughts about, um, about technology adoption and uh, how this process looks like for the um, uh, HR function. And uh, thank you, uh, Sam, <laughs> for joining us today and Marianne, and uh, yeah, let's be in touch and thank you all. Great, thank you very much for having me. Any questions later on as well? Yeah, feel free. Okay, thank you.